Bless the churches everywhere, men again in your name. We give the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on, ladies.
It's good to see you, bud, Donald. I'll tell you yes, that. amen. Missed you around today. We missed you this morning. I know morning is not your time, really, but well, we had a bunch of Indians in the place. You kicked me out yesterday about two o'clock in the day. <laughs> this morning I couldn't even do it. I never woke up till eleven o'clock, and I wouldn't have woke up being the so Jesus. Yeah, I heard a preacher ask him, "Man, so I haven't seen you in the church lately." He said, "Plenty, son. I'm in a rut. I'm in a rut." So he said, I went out to, to uh, check on him and said, that was a big old inner strength mattress he was in. <laughs> <laughs> so I know how it feels to be old. Uh -oh. <laughs> you're on your way. You're just, you're just a kid. I'll tell you like that. Well, I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Georgia, remember um, Bobby Steele and her yes, family, absolutely. Bobby um, Sheets. Um, also, um, <laughs> His cousin, they're coming up, and um, we got a lot of people probably so they're up in the Smoky Mountains and it's probably one of the so we can pray for um, travel and mercy for them. And um, I like for the church to remember my family as a whole. Um, God has really worked for miracles in my family. Praise the Lord. Last time I read a pat about the miracle that happened, and I just thank you for praising for that. Um, continue to remember my mom and my dad and my grandma, of course. And, and, Remember all the yet you can talk tomorrow by yourself. Yes, amen. Remember all of our young people. Oh, sure. yeah, and then, I'm sorry. And um, Angie and Allen, that one that came here and had his leg amputated. Um, her niece, her name is Maya. Um, I told her I'm going to help as much as I can if anyone else wants to help. Um, she's five years old and she has epilepsy seizures. And um, she has these I mean, they're nonstop. She's, um, they put it like it, it's, a, it's, it's like a pacemaker in that sends waves to her brain to keep her from having these seizures because, I mean, they're constant. She's in one almost 24 hours a day. And um, she's having so many that it ran down the battery. They, they, she hadn't even had an in two months and it already ran down the battery. And they said these batteries are supposed to last like five years. But for some reason it ran it down and put another one in and it also did the same thing. So they said that this... Um, machine isn't working for her, so they have a new medication out now, and since it is uh, marijuana-based, um, they give it to her because she's under the age of 18, so they refuse to give it to her, so she's in Riley right now, and they're trying to get these seizures as much as she can, but the family is doing a benefit, they're selling shirts for epilepsy right now, it's the same thing Rita's sister's got. Um, but anyway, um, they got to get up $5,000. The family's got to move to Colorado so they can treat this little girl. They're going to take her to a, um, like a, that hospital in particular. Mayo, Mayo. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll minister to her from there because they've already passed the law for children <coughs> under that age um, for that drug. So please remember her because um, the family is, um, they're poor as dirt like we are. I mean, they're just... Right and the, the mom, the first mother's got two other children and she can't afford to go to work because, you know, she's always there with the medical sure. condition of that child. So um, they're doing a benefit. So just remember my in your prayers. Amen. 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 He goes to Brother um, Kenny mm -hmm. Hayden's church. Okay, well, I, I was put one on there. It was posted on Facebook. It was really a bad accident. Four car pilot, and I went on the red. And uh, one person was very fast away. And uh, Sister Patty had talked to her Saturday and she was happy to work with her. She, uh, she asked the church to remember her and her. She said she's having some really bad problems with her neck. And so she has to treat her. Amen. Sister.
And then remember that well, Joshua take care of. He has two for his ears. And the doctor has been confessed to see that it helps hearing, and that it's not his hearing is going down. So he it was about six months probably will not be able to hear him. Amen. Amen. Anybody have a shave here? Yes, we do. Sit. Yeah, and he turns his life around. Amen. He said he knows the Lord, you know. 
and everything. So just pray to God to have guidance in that. Amen. Remember, uh, Sister Lisa and Brother Sean, I left them up before the Lord. What's her last name? Anderson. 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 Anderson is her last name. Okay. Who said that? Brother Mark asked. Oh, Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> they were, the yeah, whole, family was, whole family was there. Oh, yes, yeah, she officially is an Anderson. If you weren't at the reception, you really don't know what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> their dad, uh, Sean's dad is Terry Anderson, who is been with the fire department for many, many, many years ready to retire. And he came up to her and he said, um, Snowball. do you know how that us uh, firemen carry people out of a burning farm? She said, no. And he went, throw her over his shoulder and carried her all the way around the room. Yep. And I put her down and said, okay, now you're official Anderson. <laughs> So, so this is the Anderson tradition. <laughs> she, she was laughing so hard. She, I'm, I'm surprised he could hold on to her heart as she was laughing, but I mean, he just picked her up and threw her over his shoulder and went around. He said, I was pretty good for a man who's 57 years old. And, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it, was, it was, I was laughing so hard. That was really, really funny. But, but anyway, just remember them. Yeah, they uh, are uh, somewhere over in Brown County. And a log cabin. I don't know where, but, but anyway, up in the hills in Brown County. So I remember them. And I was, if, remember uh, his mother that was here from Florida. She was here this morning uh, in service with us. And um, and remember uh, her dad, Sonny. He works with George Ann and Tim driving a bus. And he said yesterday, there's no reason why in the world that I shouldn't be in church all the time. But um, but of course I don't, uh, I don't didn't see him this morning and I don't see him this evening. But remember Sunday and lift him up before yeah, the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'll get on him when I see him. <laughs> he came to the wedding yesterday and everything. And he, as he left out of the reception yesterday, he said, "Next time, make more chili." Yeah. <laughs> He's still here. We ran out. We ran. We. I mean, we were right down. I had maybe an eighth of a cup of chili, uh, just a couple spoons full is all I had. But you know, you didn't. You never know when you prepare food for a, a reception or any kind of a party. You never know what kind of turnout you're going to have. But we had enough food other than I ran out of chili. <laughs> Pat, brother Pat said I could have ate two bowls of chili. <laughs> But anyway, so remember them and lift them up before the Lord. Anybody else? And, and like I said, please remember our church. We've got a lot of people, not just people that go to Hindo, but there's other people that normally here is not here this evening. So just remember, uh, Brother Bill. Remember my brother and my sister. Amen. Amen. Can you have a son saved? He's on his way back from St. Louis on the train. Okay, amen. 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 Can you all? That's about the request by Beth left of him. We do joke around and have a lot of fun, but it is serious. Amen. Let's all stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Let's all pray together. Mighty Saviors, we come before you this way. We're so thankful for thy goodness and thy mercy, Lord Jesus. So thankful for the Lord. Your favorite God that is in each and every need, Lord, no matter what it is, Lord, truly, Lord, Lord. In all things, bind your people together with cords of love. Touch lives. Turn men's lives around, oh God. Amen. You're able to change men's lives. That's what it's all about. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon us today. It's been a good day. Praise you for We're expecting a good service tonight. Move in the hearts and lives of men. I mean, in every name call, in every need may not call, we give it to you. Trust in the believe in the God that you'll make a way. Where there seems to be no way. Amen. We see you doing it any time, Lord. Amen. Lord, to God bless us, we pray. That's the churches everywhere, Father. We thank you, Lord, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Good to serve you, Lord. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. Amen. Uh, Sister Angie, I said she was Ready, Jeremy? Yep. This little one of mine.
16.26, it says, For what a man profit that if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give for exchange for his soul? And this song is, I love this song, it's a G. Um, because I don't want to be a fantasy to anybody. I just want to be what God wants me to be. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people looking for fame and fortune in this world, but give me Jesus and I'll be just fine because he is my provider. So worship as we, uh, as I sing this, we, if I got a mouse in the way, it's a G. Nothing more and nothing
You know what? I uh, I was uh, I, I was uh, sitting over there this morning, you know, and Sister Jennifer gave her a message. And, uh, uh, anyway, uh, the uh, it was it was pretty pretty interesting to uh, to uh, hear that. Uh, that version of Jonah that, that she gave because uh, as a new person, as a new person walking in, in Christ, and, and even though I've, I don't have, I mean, I've known, I've known uh, and, and been in church for quite some time, but, but I haven't been solidly in church. Those old Bible stories really, really, they're really interesting to me because there's so many things that I learned from them that, that evidently back when I was a little kid in church, I didn't pay enough attention because uh, uh, now they're more interesting to me than was they was when I was a little kid. So, <laughs> and I get a message from them, so it was good. Okay, this is what we want to do. Okay, the golf that said. Don't play. 
Told me, he said, You gonna believe this? The guy in front of me and said, uh, You're making too much noise. Well, it's hurt. He said, You're making too much noise. He said, Well, don't blame it on me. Blame it on the Holy Ghost. 
And the uh, time I got home, I, I, I happened to be to Methodist Church and he used to be maintenance man there. And, and the time I got home, I had a, a verse, of course, written to this song. Don't blame it on me, blame it on the Holy Ghost. Then a man at my church, he called me aside one day. Just let God, uh, let God do His thing.
Thanksgiving, he returns back into me when I am giving sacrifice to him. God is not a one-sided God. Whenever you enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving, he will give back unto you what you are offering sacrifice to. He doesn't want us to burn idol incense or burn out these uh, bull oxes and sheep and oxen. He's not looking for a flesh sacrifice. He's not looking for a blood sacrifice. He's not looking for a sacrifice that can be displayed in front of men with a monetary value. He's looking for the sacrifice of the heart. He's looking for a mindset that has been changed. He's looking for a body that has been renewed. He's looking for a heart that has been touched, that has been pricked, that has been molded, that has been shaped, that has been renewed. So whenever I sing hallelujah, it ain't a grab on hallelujah. And it ain't something that can just be spoken like an idle word. But when I proclaim, I'm in my presence door. God, here I am. I proclaim, hallelujah. I say, here I am, Lord. Here's with me. Take the coals off of the altar. Touch my life and put me where you would have me to go.
not with enticing words of man's wisdom. I come to you with the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. These things that I'm speaking to you are not just babblings of a man's tongue. And these things that I say to you are not prophecies of sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. And these things that are foreordained are not things that are built upon a carnal stone, but are upon a chief cornerstone. And the things that I have to say to you are this. First and foremost, remember always, always above all, love. Yeah. And charity beginning at home. Uh -huh. And if your household is built on love, and your household is built on charity, you will reap love and you will reap charity. Do not be judgmental. Do not look at your fellow man and base what you see. Right. But look upon the heart as God you looks upon the heart. Hey. And if you have something negative to say, keep your mouth closed. Hey. 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 Can I get an amen over there? Amen. Amen. Who is the sovereign judge of the nations? Lord Jesus. Who is the creator of heaven and earth? Who has set kingdoms up and brought them down? There is one judge. There is one judge. And he is not in the judging business right now. We live in the dispensation of grace. That means that right now, Jew and Gentile, bond and free, male and female, are all equal in the sight of God. And there is not one thing that you can do that God will not forgive you for. Amen. However, men have a very bad habit of having a very good memory. <laughs> Whenever God forgives you as you repent, it is as far as the east is from the west. But it's very convenient that east and west meet right here. <laughs> and the point being made is men like to look at east and west being right here. But when God looks at east and west, he is looking at the horizons. Come on. Hallelujah. Pray for your leadership. Because the world that we are walking in wants to tear your leadership down. They do not want to hear your leadership oh, preaching yeah. love. They don't want to hear your leadership preaching godly principles. They want their children to be able to behave and act however they feel is necessary. And if it feels good, do it. That's the premise of the world. But that is not the premise of God. Now, most of you, as what I can sell and what I can see, not judging by hair color, are not just raising children, but you got grandbabies too. And I'm not. And that's an honorable thing that you have made to that gray hair. That is a thing or two. You worked hard for it, so I'm not telling you anything new, but I will remind you that you are the head of your household if you are the elder. And I will remind you that you've been given charge these children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great if you are so blessed. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Remember first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Amen. Amen. Remember first what you built your foundation on. Amen. Remember first the first flame that you had when you went down in water baptism. Remember first that zeal. Remember first that enthusiasm. Remember first that first drink of the living water. Be revived inside. Yes. Be renewed inside. Yes. Remember what it was like when you had your first taste of God. Remember what it was like when you had your first drink of the Holy Ghost. And take that remembering and roll back the Rolodex and knock the dust off of your mind a little bit. And remember what power you spoke with when you first came into this kingdom. And remember what authority you walked in when you first stepped into this house. And remember what strength that you stood in whenever you proclaimed Jesus Christ as part of your life. Hallelujah. 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 As I look at the elders and, the, and this wise council in front of me, there is anointing here that is very strong. It confronts me when I get in this house. And it's carried on by people who are bearing wisdom. You have made it this far. You've obtained some wisdom. And you've obtained some knowledge. And you've obtained some standing. And you've worked this hard. And you've gone this far. But I charge you to wear out, not rust out. Hallelujah. 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 
instruments of the temple. That means you got to start lighting the menorah. That means you got to start kindling the fires. That means you got to start offering sacrifice on the horn altar. That means you got to sprinkle a little bit of blood on one side of the ark. That means that you got to present yourself holy and acceptable unto God. And be wearing your breastplate of righteousness and having your feet shown with the preparation of the gospel. That your head will be surrounded by the hem of the salvation. That on one arm you would have the shield of faith. On the other arm you would have the sword of the spirit. And around about your waist would be truth. That is what it means to be a Christian. That is what it takes to make this fight go on. That is what's going to win your battles. That's what's going to make you a conqueror. That's what's going to make you victorious. That's what's going to make your enemies lay down in front of you. That's what's going to level cities. That's what's going to part oceans. That's what's going to shut up the mouth of the liars. And those that would damn you and hate you and cast you into hell. Those are the things that are going to shut them up. Because we are not religious people. We are spiritual people led by the Holy Ghost. And we will not condemn one another based on the opinions of the man. Are we that we should judge? I didn't create heaven, did you? Were you there when he hung the stars? Were you there when he founded the earth? Were you there when he spoke life into Adam? So shut your mouth concerning your judgment. Because God is a God of love. And he wants to look at all of you and love all of you. He doesn't want me to look at my sister here and hate her. He doesn't want me to look at my brother and hate him. I'm supposed to speak life over all of you. That's my job. That's my duty. That's my charge. And whenever I bless you, God will bless me. Hallelujah. That's good news. Amen. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember that power? Is it starting to come back? Talk to somebody this week. Talk to two or three somebodies. Talk to three or four somebodies. Smile a while. Give that frown a rest. Have a little bit of twinkle in your eye. Let the light of the Holy Ghost shine out from your face. You know that Moses was so filled with the Shekinah glory of God, they had to cover his face with a veil. Hallelujah. Speak life into your life. When you're doing your hair in the morning, you're brushing your teeth, you're picking the lint out of your ear, you start looking at your face and say, God is blessing me. I speak life into me. I am a child of the King. And you look at yourself in the mirror, and it don't matter what your face looks like, you bless that face. Come on. Amen. You bless that face. It's yours. God gave it to you. Hallelujah. Speak life. <laughs> Laugh a while. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. I say the joy of the Lord is your strength. I love you all and God bless everybody. say something to the Lord. I enjoyed your words so much this morning. Um, I just want to encourage everyone that there is no barrier and or um, educational process that denies you to share the word of God with someone this week as the young brother shared that I'm a street preacher and I've been doing this for 20, 20 plus years ministering in the streets I uh, uh, believe throughout the nation here, ministering and looking for Native Americans on the streets, looking for men and women, and most especially I run into veterans. So I want to encourage you that you don't need a theological seminary degree to say that you can say, Thus saith the Lord thy God, and to anoint someone and lay hands on the sick, and they shall be healed, and that you can cast out devils. Hallelujah! That you can prosper at the time and point of time when you're praying for someone that you need will be met in yeah. Jesus' name. There's nothing too difficult or too hard for the Holy Ghost.
can meet your need. And I don't care if it's a neurological disorder, but I want to encourage you tonight that I'm a survivor of cancer. And I went on a Zachariah fast and God healed me because he has a sense of humor that he wants me to tell everyone and anybody that's willing to listen for two seconds that God does still heal today. He healed my daughter of autism. He, he healed my daughter of deaf, mute, and she could not speak, but she, he healed her too. In Jesus' name, he does still heal. Hallelujah. Sisters, you want to say something, honey? She's a little shy. We're trying to pull her out of here. We're going to get her out of here. You want to say something? say a few things, a few truths that if you can get a hold of, you can be saved. Right. And I'll say people go half their life and they don't get a hold of it. If you can just get you to get a hold of it, understand it. There's a couple principles that you've got to get a hold of. Amen. Well, one thing, uh, he said a while ago, we're saved by grace. And that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Amen. You cannot buy it. You cannot earn it. You can't do enough good deeds to earn it. It's a gift of God. Now all the good deeds and all these things will follow this. Yeah, these things shall follow them to believe. Right? But just doing those good deeds won't do it. And I was raised up a time of do it your head self religion. We're trying to work our way to heaven. Somehow, after many, many years, I still didn't feel the security of the believer. The Baptist she was talking about years ago, the eternal security of the believer. They believe that in a big, big way. And I don't want to worry about some of them that, 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 that believe that. But, because uh, I, I know, uh, I'm just judging, I'm just being a judge, and I know I'm not supposed to judge, but he said judge the tree by the fruit it bears. <clears throat> Hello there. And, and, and I keep my mouth shut. I don't say a word. I don't try to judge on anybody. Everybody belongs to God. Amen. And I want you to know something. I didn't get there by accident. I heard somebody said about a, a, a turtle was on a fence post. He said, he didn't get there by himself. Uh, I didn't get where I'm at by myself. Through much struggle. And trying to find myself. And find the Lord in a, in, in a way that I know Him today. I haven't always known Him like I know Him today. I mean, it took me years before I found grace. I'm talking about 30 years. It took me a lot of years to find grace. And I tried to be good. Everybody tries to be good, or they should. And they get discouraged, and they, and they, and they fall away. Your, your goodness will not save you. <coughs> All your good deeds will not save you. Amen. It's a gift of God. This is a principle that you've got to learn, or you'll be struggling with your salvation till the day you die. Because every time you get weak, you look at you look at yourself and say, "What have I done to cause this? Or why can't I get a hold of what? I know I'm not worthy. Uh, is anybody here worthy? Let me see what you look like." The Bible said there was none worthy, not one. That settled it. We're none of us worthy. And never was worthy, and never will be. But His blood, His grace, makes us worthy. And so we've got a right. Amen. As, as a children of God. The scripture said we're no longer servants, but we're sons. Amen. The servants come in the back door. Sons go through the front door. That house is mine. Salvation is mine. The Lord is mine. Amen. This thing is mine. It belongs to me. Yeah. I'm an heir to it. I, I inherit it. I haven't got the whole deal yet. But I've, amen, I, I've, I've got the earnest of my inheritance. Amen. When you when you pay down earnest money on a piece of property, nobody can get away from you until you fulfill the obligations of that earnest. You got it tied up. So I got my soul tied up, tangled up, wrapped up in Jesus. Amen. 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 
And one day I'm going to get the full deal. Amen to God. I, I don't know if I can contain it. Sometimes I can't contain what I got. But this thing is real. This is a real thing we're talking about. We're not talking about a fairy tale. I lived in a fairy tale religion. I'm telling you. I lived in a church. There was a lot of a lot of uh, men's thoughts amen, and ideas ruled a lot of things. And if I don't like this guy, well, you can't like him either. If we're not in fellowship, you can't like him. And I, I, I demand that you not like him because I don't like him. But I don't accept him as a brother, so you can't accept him. Now, I, I live through those things. And I'm glad that I'm free of that. I don't have that anymore. Amen. I found I found who my Savior was. is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only one I got to please tonight. Praise the Lord. And I, I found forgiveness for my sins. I found grace in God. I don't walk in guilt anymore. I've seen Christians go half the life with guilt. Let me tell you something. I've stood beside people dying uh, in, in, in the ER, you know. And begging and crying, saying, The devil's telling me I'm lost. Been in church all the life. And the devil's telling them they're lost. You don't believe the devil, do you? He's never told a lost man he's saved. He never told a saint man he's lost. No. He, he, he's a liar. He cannot, he cannot preach truth. Amen. If the devil's fighting against you, you must have something. Because it don't matter what you do. Oh, you don't have to do what them people tell you to do. Or you don't have to do that. That's a, you don't have to do that. Right away. And when you get saved, you say, well, all them people in the church are saved but you. If they knew what a big fake you was, they wouldn't even have fellowship with you. I mean, they could pass judgment on they can't even see inside your heart. But we serve one that looks upon the heart. I found in the scripture one day. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. Yeah. They got still people they can judge you when you walk through the door. He's saved, she's lost, he's in, he's out, he's up, he's down, he's backslid. Just for looking at you. Past judgment. You don't even know. You don't even know your name. I have people go and say, but that Pat Davis, he's an alcoholic, he played in the clubs and stuff. Let me tell you something. I did play in clubs. Never took a drink the whole time as there in a club. I don't drink. But I had to land drunk in every bar and uh, you know. They'll do those things. But Jesus was perfect. And they said he was a glutton and a wine bigger. Why wouldn't they say that about you? In fact, beware when all men speak well of you. I kind of get words. I heard a lot about you. You're a pretty good guy. Mm, you just ain't talked to the right one yet. <laughs> There's some of them will not tell you that. But it don't matter. Because we're not serving men. We're serving God. Hey, now I'm telling you, John, if you can get a hold of this grace thing. If you can get a hold of it. Now there's going to be one day this door's going to be closed. That's true. The door of grace is going to be closed. And he's coming back with his saints to judge the world. See, a lot of people don't know that. He's coming twice. He's coming as a thief in the night. And he's going to take his people away. And then he's coming back with his saints to execute judgment upon the earth. And we know you're not the saints shall judge the world. Think about that. Now, there have to be changes. We'll have to be exalted and put in the place of God. Amen. When we put on the whole thing of the full deal, we become like God. All the mysteries of life will be opened up into us. We won't wonder why there's deep formed babies. We we'll know why. We won't wonder why all the things in life that we just couldn't see that God that was the fair of God. You'll find out God's fair. He knows exactly what he's doing. And we know that he does. And so we follow him the best we know how. We do the best we can. And people get mad at me when they come to me for answers, and I don't have the answers for them. I'm sorry, I'm not the Savior. I'll tell you what I believe, I'll tell you what I think, but I'm not God. <clears throat> if you're looking for God, you're looking at the wrong one. 
But someday they can look upon me. And I'll be like him. Come on. Hallelujah. And I will understand the mystery. To me, that's going to be worth the trip. Hallelujah. When all the mysteries of life are open unto us. Why was I born out on the reservation somewhere? Kind of forsaken the man and went had to go through what I went through. Well, I don't know. God just, He saw fit for you to do that. And now look at you. I was preaching and trying to reach people. Amen. The American Indian and even doing a great work. And, and don't tell you, you may not get a lot of praise of men. You may not get a lot of stars put by your name. You may not get a lot of fan mail. No, one day you're going to hear a voice say, Enter in, my child. Well done. Amen. Enter in to the joys of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then you're going to receive that reward that your soul cries out for. Can you say amen? Amen. Now I want you to know God knows how to bring peace and knows how to bring perfect peace. And I'm talking about right here and right now. In the midst of a, of a wicked and a uh, perverse. perverse generation, God is able to give you the peace of God in your life. Raise you above thy fellows, the Bible said. Amen. I'm talking about His Spirit. Yes. Let me tell you something. I know that the economy is going down the tube. If anybody knows it, the church knows it. We always had a little food pantry here that we still have, and we can't keep food in it. The last few years, it's just been, it's just been hard to keep food in it. We had people stand and cry and say, I've worked all my life. I've never had to go and ask for food. They just cry. I said, don't feel bad, honey. I've been in this shape. It's been a long time. Because uh, after you struggled a while, you can settle you and establish you and strengthen you, and you will. But I want you to know something. God's got His own economy. Yes, right. Right. We're living by God's economy. We're not living by man's economy. Hey. That's why a lot of people that you wouldn't believe is prospering even in these times. Amen. Because God takes care of His own. Hallelujah. He always has and He always <laughs> will. Amen. Don't go counting your money and say, I can't afford to give. You can't afford not to give. Right. If you give one way, you'll give it back seven ways. One place you said a hundred. Yeah. And, and God can do that. He can bless you here and here and here and here. And cause men to bring good things and live at your feet. Yeah. Things you couldn't even afford to buy. Yeah. I got me a good razor gift to me the other day. I mean, want to thank you for that, Donald. Hey, like I love it. I think it's one of the greatest gifts I ever got. Some new things are good, huh? Oh, man. There are some, yeah. Uh, I just I just dig that thing on me and he don't cut nothing except the except the beer. I told you, what are you And I mean I'm clean shaving man. Every olive oil thing is a hung on a clean shaving man. Oh. I'm serious. And I've been uh, shaving that old Gillette razor for years and years and I'm getting over my skin's about a stretch also going to stretch and when I cut it it stays cut and I can't hardly get the bleeding stop. Boy, I got something now I can drag it across her and it don't do nothing but cut hair. And that man did that for me, brother. You won't think so much of me when you buy the blades for it. Well, yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be worth it. Whatever, whatever it is, it'll be worth it. Oh, Amen. Children, God loves you. And he, he wants you to come to this understanding that He's God and you're not, and He knows it. You're not your Savior. Uh, Amen. No, He's your Savior. And He wants to do for you. He wants to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Amen. All you got to do is ask. If you ask, you shall receive. If you not, it shall be open. And I found Him after 54 years to be true. Now true, it took me a lot of years to surrender to it. Now there's powers in every believer. But you've got to surrender to us somewhere along the line. Amen. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. You get that mindset, I don't care what others do, I must go on. Yes. Oh, they're doing this over here in this church. I don't care. God bless them all. I don't care. Yeah, well, they got spirit filled cabbage. Well, good. I hope he saves them all. I don't care. Amen. But I care. Amen. Oh, the cabbage. That was the old mother heart church when I was growing up. They're just people, just like you are. Most of them doing the very best they know how to do. 
and the Lord loves him too. And if he led me to the to the Holy Ghost, he can need me to the Holy Ghost too. He's willing that not any should perish. Amen. That all should come to repentance. That's available to us, children. He bled and died while we were yet in our sin. He didn't wait until we got good enough. While we were yet in our sin, he loved us. He gave himself for us. Shorty I had a man ask me about you last night. I said, well, he comes to my church. Oh, I didn't know. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I'd like to see Shorty. So I, that's another reason for him to come to church. Do I want to see yeah. him? Yeah. Huh? Do I want to see him? Oh, I, I think you will. I think you will. What's it, Sunny? Sunny. 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 Uh, Chris Moore. Chris Moore. Really? Hey, yeah, he loves Chris. Everybody in town loves Sunny, huh? Eh? He's a good guy. <laughs> I've known him ever since I was a kid. Amen. Let me tell you something. God has good children. I'm going to let you go with this. You take it and chew on it and chew on it. But if you find anything, you've got to find grace with God. You've got to find it. You've got to find the ability to forgive yourself. Amen. And, 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 and get your, your, your sins have been nailed to that tree. Your guilt has been nailed to that tree. And you don't need to take them off of there. You don't have anything to feel guilty about. Oh. Amen. We have faults and failures and shortcomings, but we don't have sins because they've been blotted out by the blood of the Savior. And you've got to come and understand that. Yes. And there's men that try to control you by making you believe. Every little thing you do, you must be doing something bad. You wouldn't be going through what you're going through. Well, I guess Jesus didn't have to go through what he went through either. But he did willingly. And he laid his life down. And he said, no man takes it from me. I'll lay it down on myself. And if I lay it down, I have power to take it down again. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. I love him tonight. I praise him tonight. I pray a blessing on everybody to come through these doors tonight. God bless you. Amen. I keep you. Don't give up on God. Amen. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. He'll go drive off his throne for you if you just draw nigh to him a little bit. Well, I never hear from God. Maybe he don't ever hear from you. I'll tell you one thing. He's a gentleman. He won't bother you if you don't want to be bothered. Amen. There are some people who want to be bothered. I told him a long time ago, Lord, I don't want to be bothered. Amen. He wakes me up and I and talks to him. Yeah. He brings people up before me and says, pray for this one. Pray for that one. And I just lay there sometimes in my bed and say, Lord, I just love you. Lord, I just love you. And I feel his love. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's check for Mr. Will. Go ahead. That's back, Bobby.